Hi everybody, today's topic is going to be what is supplicate and what is it used for? Uh, for those of you that are new to this channel, my name is Dr. B with Dr. B Addiction Recovery and on this channel we cover all things substance abuse and related topics based on science and clinical experience. Uh, to proceed, uh, the question today, what is supplicate, is sort of an add-on to a recent video that I did, which was the three FDA-approved medications for opiate use disorder. I classified that group of medications as the first one being methadone, which is considered a full agonist therapy for long-term assistance with the opiate abuse. And going down the line, we went back to buprenorphine products, and that is uh, usually a sublingual agonist antagonist, also indicated for long-term, what's often known as medication-assisted treatment, which is a term no longer used. And finally, another approved medication is the naltroxone products. People often know it as a Vivitrol depot shot, or uh, nowadays you can even get implants that last one to two months. That medication is an antagonist, and I had a discussion about this is not truly long-term therapy, but it's relapse prevention. Going along that same line, we're going to go back to the agonist antagonist group, which is the buprenorphine products, uh, often uh, presented nowadays as a sublingual medication. Uh, in uh, 2017, April of 2017, the FDA approved supplicate uh, as a uh, 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 depot injection for one month. And it is exactly the same thing as buprenorphine, often known as Suboxone. So uh, some differences I wanna make here, and people often ask, well, should I get on supplicate? Uh, uh, is it better than Suboxone, Buprenorphine, Subutex? I want to make some distinctions here with these, uh, uh, this group of medications within the agonist antagonist group. Uh, so as most of you know, you know the term Suboxone, and you also have heard the term Subutex, and there's a few other brands and formulations. Uh, the active ingredient in all of these medications is Buprenorphine. And that is the agonist antagonist that actually blocks the, or binds to the opiate mu receptors and you get the clinical effect. These medications are sublingual. They're dosed one, two, three, four times daily. The same company that produces Suboxone, which also has a naltroxone, a naloxone component in it, which is uh, actually neither here or there or not important for this discussion because it doesn't do anything uh, uh, in your body uh, when you take it sublingually. Uh, that same company makes Supplicate and this medication is what's considered a depot injection subcutaneous and it's a once a month injection. So how is this done and what is the, what are the indications and how are you supposed to do it? First of all, as the uh, company uh, labels it and with the studies they uh, did, uh, the expectation is you are at least on seven days of sublingual subitex, suboxone, or buprenorphine before you make that transition over to the depot injection of sublicate. Uh, and what this means is what they want you to do is use the sublingual form whatever it is, Suboxone, Subitex, uh, Buprenorphine, whatever you want to call it. They want you to use that form so you can get a dose adjustment, 16 milligrams, 24 milligrams, 12 milligrams, before you move to the Sublicate. Uh, and this makes sense. And uh, one of the concerns I have here, and one of the things uh, I see happening here, is the fact that uh, uh, many programs or many folks are thinking they can just jump into this medication immediately and you can't because at the root of it substance abuse or addiction to opiates uh, is much more than just taking some medication as important as that is so number one you have to be on uh, uh, sublingual products for at least seven days to stabilize and I for the most part agree with that after this is done, and uh, let's assume you've achieved some stabilization, 
uh, you are going to get this medication and basically it's an injection it's a quite a thick fluid and there's a technology that delivers it and the technology is called Atragel. That's the delivery uh, uh, system, the technology of the delivery system. Uh, it's a deposit, okay, of a solution. And over the month, this solution releases uh, increments of the total dose of your buprenorphine. The way they have, the way you can think of it is that uh, it's deposited in your subcutaneous fat tissues. And every day, a certain amount of milligrams is released over a month. So you don't have to take the sublingual medication. Uh, the first two months, the way the company uh, lays it out is that you want to go with the 300 milligram dose. And once you get a certain amount in your bloodstream and system, you can go down to the 100 milligram dose. That is how they kind of sell it and that's how it's been written up and that's what the studies have shown that you should be doing. And I'll add some thoughts about that. And uh, at that point, uh, and in addition to that, the uh, dosing equivalent recommendations for the sublingual suboxone is 16 to 24 milligrams. If you're going to do 300 month one, 300 month two, and then 100 milligrams month three. Now, if you do the addition and you divide up the 300 by 30, it doesn't seem like it adds up to 16 to 24 milligrams. And that's because of the fact that what once it's in your body and the way you take it, the delivery and the amount of suboxone that's actually active changes. So you sort of need a little bit less, and that's important to understand. Uh, finally, what I really want to get into is, uh, uh, does this medication work? And uh, 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 some of the nuances that I've uh, experienced with it. Uh, what are some of the positives? What are some of the benefits? Well, some of the obvious uh, 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 positives about this medication is that uh, the patient doesn't have to be dosing all day, every day, sublingually, and usually this uh, buprenorphine products taste horrible. Uh, this is a positive for some people and a negative for some people. Uh, we know the obvious positives, but the negative says that I've had some patients that uh, find the ritual of dosing sublingually an important part of their recovery, and that's okay with me. And uh, these are very compliant patients that want to stay under buprenorphine oral product, and they continue to do so. Uh, some of the positives on the side of having the shot, uh, what does it do? Uh, it takes away the time, the effort, uh, some of the social characteristics particular to that individual patient. For example, he might be working at a law firm or around family, and he doesn't want to take this medication. Uh, in those ways, this is a very big positive to have a once a month depot injection. Uh, at the same time, from a practitioner's uh, perspective, sometimes I use it uh, to increase compliance with the uh, medication. And this works for uh, quite a few people. Now, it certainly isn't going to work when a patient is adamant about using, uh, because in that case, they're not going to get this medication. But it does work with the, quite a few of my patients that, uh, and most of them are this way in my practice where I have a really strong rapport with and they're very open about their use or skipping their doses and wanting to use. They themselves want the added security of having the injection. This sort of begs the question uh, of uh, can there be use on top of the injection or can you add suboxone on top of the injection? And the third question is, can you stay on the 300 milligrams if needed so? And I'm going to uh, answer all three of those. Uh, in the couple of do dozen cases where I've introduced supplicate into uh, the practice or the patient's plan of care, I've had one case where the patient um, continued to use high doses of fentanyl on top of this medication. Um, and that was kind of odd. 
But again, it's important to know all the outliers and the surrounding characteristics of each one of these things, especially when they're relatively new. It's three years since it's been introduced. So I have had, I have had one patient that would get this medication and use high doses of fentanyl. In that patient's case, they were also using high doses of benzos, they were using high doses of gabapentin, and they were using high doses of methamphetamines, and we continued this for a couple of months. Another thing that I have noticed with some patients is that uh, I have to get this medication on board within exactly 25 days as those last few days of the end of the month start to approach, for some reason, their cravings seem to increase and they're more likely to use. So I mitigate that by tailoring the dosing around that time. And this seems to work for most of those patients, which is a small subset of patients that I have. Uh, finally, the other thing is uh, some patients once you go to the 100 milligrams or a few, very few, where you stay at the 300 milligrams, they very honestly will tell you uh, they still need a little more uh, Suboxone or buprenorphine products. And in those cases, I go ahead and prescribe maybe 10 strips of 8 milligrams or 10 pills of 8 milligrams so they get their supplicate injection and they might be taking four to eight milligrams a day on top of that. The other way I mitigate that is some patients, again, very few, I just simply stay on the 300 milligram dose uh, indefinitely uh, until I want to get them off of it. Uh, so uh, all of these things are certainly outside the written indications, but they can be and they will become off-label uses that are probably going to be accepted within the standards of care and practice for this type of medication and treatment of opiate use disorder. One other issue I want to discuss is, is there any additional complications with using supplicate versus using the oral form or the sublingual form? And uh, besides the usual uh, issues of endocrinopathies, you know, low testosterone and uh, constipation, um, well, we are actually introducing a large needle in your skin, and that comes with its issues of uh, infections, uh, localized reactions, the pain at the injection site, and so forth. Finally, one other thing that I think a lot of people may not know about is in the first few days after the injection, in the event that the depot needs to be taken out, you can actually go into the site and remove the product. Uh, it seems unbelievable because it's in liquid form, but you have to remember it's a deposit and it actually, uh, to some extent, solidifies. Uh, and within the first, I believe, a week, you can remove this product. Otherwise, the way it works is it's a biodegradable product over the month, and it degrades away and slowly releases the buprenorphine. Uh, I am starting to use this more and more in my practice. Again, what I see in general is patient comfort and desire. Uh, uh, they don't like the taste of the oral medication. They have a busy lifestyle. Uh, they have issues where they want to keep it private to the extent that they're putting buprenorphine products under their tongue. And the third group of patients is uh, the ones that there are some compliance issues with, but not all the patients that there's compliance issues with because the ones that are so extreme and radical, uh, they will either not get the depot injection of supplicate or they will use on top of it. Again, I've had very, very, very few of those as I described. And the complications, additional complications are the fact that you're introducing a foreign body into the skin. Uh, I suspect over time, uh, this will become more and more sort of uh, the go-to medication in terms of the fact that people are also on highly sensitive jobs. At this time, something like Vivitrol, now Troxone injections are considered a safety mechanism. Let's say if you are a conductor on a train 
or a pilot or an engineer, any job that has a lot of safety issues and Vivitrol is thought of that, that safety medication. Well, uh, in many ways, if the time is appropriate where you need to be on this sort of therapy, medication-assisted treatment long-term, this adds extra security for the employer of that patient in their remaining sober and cognitively alert for work. Uh, if you like the content in this video and want to know some more, go ahead and click above to my left. If you enjoyed it and like the channel, please subscribe below to my left and hit the like button. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you.